Hello and welcome to the Forley site on behalf of ExxonMobil and our contractor companies. You'll remember from your site induction that there are many key rules and pieces of information that you need to know to work safely on the site at Forley. For example, the Forley life-saving rules, the wearing of the correct PPE for each area of the site, general evacuation and emergency procedures, and the LPS system of behavioural safety that all site personnel use to keep them safe. The site at Forley comprises a refinery and chemical complex which together produce a vast range of lubricants, fuels and also speciality chemical products like rubber and solvents. In order to produce these range of diverse products, the site uses many different feedstocks and processes this means that there are many different process areas, or units, that are manufacturing products at the site. Each process unit has its own hazards, and although they are safely operated and the Foley site has very few incidents, it's important that you know the hazards on each unit that you work on in order that you carry out your work safely and in the unlikely event of an emergency. For example, likely hazards can include toxic or flammable fluids, high pressure systems, hot or very cold surfaces, corrosive acids or alkalis, working in an area that involves upgrading of PPE, such as double hearing protection, or even wearing a life jacket when working over water. You can see that to have one induction to cover all the areas would be too long and detailed to understand. We've therefore developed specific shorter induction films for each of the units that you would be expected to work on. These inductions are very important as they contain information specific to the area that you'll be working in, including the hazards and also emergency procedures and evacuation routes that you'll require in the event of an emergency. As you did with the site induction, please give this short film your best attention and please ask either your supervisor or ExxonMobil contact if you require any more assistance or clarification. Everybody working on units must have both a site induction and a block-specific induction. We need to ensure that everybody working at Forley has the right information to ensure that nobody gets hurt. Welcome to the chemical site at Forley Refinery. The chemical site comprises three separate units. All are controlled from within INCON. And they are butyl polymers and finishing, C4s and higher olefins. This induction covers the butyl polymers finishing and C4 units only. The function of each of these different units and the processes used are all different. The hazards will therefore be different as you work on them. It's important that you are aware of the hazards of where you're working and understand the emergency procedures and facilities around you. It's good practice to always carry your site induction book, or white book as it's known, in order to familiarise yourself with the hazards of where you are working on a daily basis and the emergency facilities you may need in the event of an incident. Before working or visiting any chemicals unit, you must liaise with the permit coordinator or shift leader of the block which you intend to visit. On successful completion of the chemicals induction, you'll be issued with an electronic tagging card. On entering any chemical block, you must swipe your card at the local tagging station and also specify which area within the block you'll be visiting. Tag into area. In the event of an emergency, this will aid our ability to locate you. On leaving the block, you must tag out. You are tagged out. This ensures we know who may still be on the block and unaccounted for in an emergency situation. You must get permission to bring vehicles or other plant onto the process unit. It's important we minimise the number of vehicles on the unit as they can be a potential source of ignition and incidents have occurred where equipment has been damaged. This applies even if you have a red all areas pass. You must still notify process. To reiterate, it's important that you give as much information as possible about where you're working because in the event of an emergency we may need to search for you. If the plant gas alarm does sound, move across wind to the nearest muster point and await instructions. However, be aware that in an alarm condition the nearest muster point is not necessarily the safest. Also remember to consider that walking is working. On the chemicals units, we have many different surfaces, from paving to gravel and uneven ground. When you walk around, choose the safest route and don't rush. Butyl rubber comprises of copoly and finishing. These plants utilize various streams from the refinery to create butyl rubber. 
With the addition of halogens, this rubber is then used in the manufacturing of vehicle tyres and within the pharmaceutical industry. Butyl rubber has a number of hazards, primarily the halogens, chlorine and bromine, used in the process of manufacturing halogenated butyl rubber. These chemicals are extremely hazardous and pose a serious threat to health in the event of even a very small release. In extremely low doses, initial side effects will be itching and irritation to the eyes, nose and throat. In the event of experiencing these symptoms, evacuate immediately. The H2S escape respirator will offer some protection whilst making your way to the evacuation points. The bulk of the halogens are stored on block 45A within the halogen facilities in either chlorine or bromine road cars. However, a transfer line also runs along 13th Street and into block 40B near to gate 1 roundabout. Take this into account when deciding upon the safest evacuation point and route. There are four evacuation points in the event of a halogen release, all are at least 400 metres from the halogen facilities, and these are Block 41, the skills centre, near Gate 1. At this location, there is a breakthrough point in the fence to enable you to move further away in the event you are experiencing the effects of a halogen release. Block 35B, MEK IB2, by the old MEK control room. Block 55, 13th Street. Block 37A, east of Spheres and past Pig Trap. There are a number of red line areas on Block 40B and 45A, 35B, 39A. Site standard PPE must be worn in addition to goggles and PVC gauntlets. The finishing building is where the final process of manufacturing rubber bales occurs. Special care must be taken when entering the finishing building as there is a huge amount of automated moving machinery, hot, high pH water and fork truck movements. Any person entering the finishing building must, in addition to site PPE requirements, wear a high-vis vest and enter only using the blue pedestrian doors. Permits for the finishing building are controlled by the finishing shift leader who is located within the finishing control room. C4s extract isobutylene from a C4 LPG stream on IB2 and then extracts butenes from the remaining components in OS1 using sulfuric acid. This is then converted into SBA and MEK solvents in the front and back end of the MEK plant. The majority of MEK is used in the production of paint. Hazards which may be encountered on the C4s area include sulfuric acid, caustic, H2S in flare and RFG lines, butadiene, methanol. There's a great deal of acid on the C4s unit and any standing liquid should be treated with caution. Sulfuric acid is used in bearing strengths from 70 to 96%, 70% being brown in colour and 77% to 96% being clear. Both butyl and C4s have potential carcinogens in the form of butadiene and isoprene. Permit controllers will ensure any task involving these substances will have upgraded PPE requirements. All personnel working on the chemicals blocks must wear an H2S monitor. This monitor alarms at 10 parts per million. Always consider the hazards of H2S and suitable evacuation routes when working near a blue line area. All our plants serve an age where they can contain asbestos in insulation or gaskets, the presence of which may be determined from red lines painted onto pipework. If you think you may have found or disturbed asbestos, stop work and report it straight away to process. All persons must carry goggles to protect against airborne debris in the event of entering hot work areas or when wind speed increases. In addition to earplugs, helmet-mounted hearing protection must also be worn when working in any area designated as double hearing protection. These areas have been surveyed and designated to be above 95 decibels. Areas include under fin fan banks, IB2, butyl, butyl compressor house, finishing woodhog and FBC fan room. There is also potential for temporary double hearing areas during specific loud tasks such as high pressure jetting. A two-turn warbling alarm on the chemicals blocks signals a fire, gas release or general evacuation. The gas alarm test is carried out on a Tuesday at approximately 1600 hours on butyl. C4's general emergency alarm is tested every Wednesday at around 1600 hours. 
a continuous foghorn signals a chlorine or bromine release. The halogen alarm is tested at approximately 15.45 hours on a Monday. Remember, all the details for the units are contained inside your white induction book. The information provided is critical to you and your colleague's safety. Have the right information at the right time, rather than having no information at the wrong time. Also, when you're working on our units, please at all times always use good housekeeping philosophy, use waste bins and skips provided, never deviate from your permit conditions without getting the permit reauthorized. Don't forget, a permit to work is required for any activity and should be read and understood by all involved, as it will contain additional safety information relevant to that task at that time. Also remember our units are working 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Please do not block access or egress to any equipment or roadway. We would also ask that if you see an unsafe act or process situation, please report it immediately so that it can be investigated at the earliest opportunity. Pet phones are located across the blocks, dial 9 in an emergency. Even if it's a false alarm or condition, we would rather investigate the potential situation than not know. Your observation could be critical. Please remember, our goal is always nobody gets hurt. We mean it, and with your safe work on our unit, together we can achieve this. Finally, if there's anything in this presentation that you aren't clear of, please talk to your supervisor or a member of the process team. Thank you for listening, and have a safe day.